It made me think of when I was a kid and I wanted to play Little League. And they said, no, like, the boys play Little League, the girls play softball. And I thought, man, that's horseshit because I want to play on the Yankees. And I'm never going to play on the Yankees if they don't let me try, right? You fast forwarding now 20 years to where I'm getting that same feeling that I was sorry I was a girl. My name is Heather the Heat Hardy. I am from Brooklyn, New York. I'm a professional boxer, undefeated at 20 and 0, a two division, two time WBC boxing champion, and I'm one and one currently in MMA under the Bellator banner. Before boxing, it was like odd jobs. I was working down the Bowery, I was working for the lighting companies at home. I was teaching exercise classes in people's basements. I was delivering books to high school books to different high schools. I was working the front desk at Gleason's gym and answering the phones. I really wanted to box, but I wasn't making any money. I couldn't pay the bills. I won every title you could win as an amateur. Metros, regionals, nationals, golden gloves. I, I was ranked number one in the country in under 11 months. And actually, right after I won all these titles as an amateur, one of the girls who was a pro at Gleason's had told me, don't even bother turning pro because, you know, like, they don't pay women. Like, this is going to be your hobby, just accept that, you know? And I was like, you shouldn't say in a bad way, just in a don't be disappointed way, because I really did have high hopes at that point. And then I got the second motivation, like, this isn't just about me making money in boxing. This is so that no little 12-year-old girl has to be sorry she's a girl or sorry that she likes to hit a heavy bag. Like, no little girl should feel funny because she's good at hitting a bag. The same way I shouldn't have felt funny because I wanted to be like Mariano Rivera when I was 11 years old. It was really hard to get uh, the pro debut. They didn't want to give girls chances. This guy, Blimp, his son was signed under Debella and he knew how much I hustled. And like, already I was kind of generating some media buzz and stuff. And he like saw the potential, you know, it's like, so he has said to Lou, give her a chance. And Lou was like, I'll tell you what, if she sells 10 grand in tickets, I'll give her a chance. I'll give her a spot. You have to guarantee me $10,000 in tickets. So Blim came back and was like, can you do it? I'm like, well, I live in a lower to working class neighborhood. But I was like, fuck it, yes, I'll do it, right? Like, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I was going to do it. Like, if I had to do it like Girl Scout cookie style and knock on people's doors, I was selling those tickets. And I actually sold $13,000 in tickets for the fight. The place is friggin' packed. And everyone is screaming my name when I came out. And I got in the ring and I'm moving around. And next thing I know, I'm on my ass. I got dropped by a right hand. And like, I'm standing up, I'm looking around. And the first thing I thought in my head was, I sold $13,000 in tickets. I am not losing this fight. And I beat this girl up so bad that they had to give me the win. <laughs> Heather the Heat Hardy. So a lot of people like always ask me uh, about my pay, right? Like what does it involve? What happens when you get a fight? So I get a fight, I usually have six to eight weeks to train for it, right? Typically eight weeks. So that means two months of three a days training. It's not like we get our paychecks up front. I don't get my paycheck until the night of the fight. And if it's a boxing match, the most I ever made for a boxing match was $12,000. This was for my a 10 round title fight where I was defending against the number two contender. That's the most I've ever made in boxing is $12,000. People would say like, wow, that's, that's good. Like most women fighters are only making $5,000. But what you fail to understand is that in two months, the kind of fees that add up when you're training, I have to pay for my trainers um, and not just a boxing coach, but I also have to pay a strength and conditioning coach. The night of the fight, I have to pay for a cut man. Because that $12,000 is barely covering <laughs> my training expenses, that's why I have to work full time because I mean, my promoter doesn't fill up my refrigerator with food and pay my rent and uh, take care of like my Con Ed and my water bills. Like half the time when I have a fight, I have three months of late bills that I have to make up to pay for. MMA is a little bit different for me because where the pay scale for the actual bout is similar, I at least am on television so I can get sponsors. So, so I just started in MMA. I was a professional boxer at 20-0 before I crossed over 
and uh, people would wonder like why why should we take you seriously you know like I won my first fight it's a great win great knockout and I wouldn't trade it for the world uh, and I lost my second one I lost it to a kickboxer I was like spitting my own nose fragments out of my mouth I still felt like man if I could land one good right hand this could change everything fighting means fighting when you don't want to fight anymore I know that I'm not the best fighter, I know I'm not the smartest fighter, I know I'm not the most technical fighter, but I swear to God, I am the toughest fighter there is. I promise you guys, I'll never quit without giving it everything I have.